This settlement has really been at issue for a few months now. Um, in the initial lawsuit that Virginia Dufre brought, we saw the Prince Andrew move to dismiss based on this settlement agreement. And so now the settlement agreement has been ordered unsealed, and so we've now gotten to see it. And what we see is that it was a very broad release, and it had language that did include other defendants, but there is a real question of, what does that language actually mean and how enforceable is that language by Prince Andrew? The 2009 settlement is significant because Prince Andrew is seeking to dismiss the charges against him entirely that Virginia Dufre has brought against him. And so he is relying on that settlement agreement as one of the bases for why this complaint should be dismissed in its entirety. And so this is a real question of, interpretation of that document and does it in fact promise what he says it promises. Certainly you will hear that Virginia Dufresne's attorneys are going to say that it is an entirely irrelevant clause, this 2009 agreement that doesn't refer to Prince Andrew by name at all and is one of the broadest types of agreements you could ever see. And so you will be hearing them argue that this could not have applied to Prince Andrew, that he was not a potential defendant in the original case that was being settled against Jeffrey Epstein and that Virginia Giuffre's case should be able to go forward. It's very difficult to predict how any judge is going to rule in a specific case, especially in a case like this where the facts are so unusual. It's so rare that you have this type of argument that a defendant should be a third party beneficiary of such a broad release. So I think it remains to be seen how Judge Kaplan will rule, but the charges against Prince Andrew are very serious and I'm certain that Judge Kaplan is going to take take every measure to make sure that he's ruling in the correct way.